The origin of the idiom, the devil is in the details, is obscure, but it can certainly apply to scientific papers. That message rarely comes through in articles aimed at the public that report on a scientific study. A classic example is a study published in 2024 in the Journal of Stroke that assessed the relationship between the incidence of stroke and the consumption of carbonated beverages, fruit drinks, water, coffee, and tea. Most media articles featured headlines such as Drinking too much coffee, soda, and juice can raise the stroke risk, while others emphasize that artificially sweetened drinks are also included in the beverages that raise risk, and still others accentuated that consumption of coffee raises the risk while tea and water reduce it, never mentioning any amounts. All the data on which these headlines were based emerged from the Interstroke Case Control Study that investigated some 13,000 cases of stroke in 32 countries over an eight-year period. Patients were questioned about their lifestyle and were asked to fill out food frequency questionnaires. They were then matched with controls who had not experienced a stroke and who also underwent the same type of lifestyle evaluation. When all the results were pooled, it was evident that one or more soft drinks or fruit juices per day either sugar-sweetened or artificially sweetened, increased the risk of stroke by 22% and 8% respectively, while drinking 7 to 8 cups of water a day reduced it by 15%. Less than 4 cups of coffee a day had no effect, but more than 4 cups increased risk by 30%. A couple of cups of tea of any kind was found to reduce risk by roughly 20%. Now for the details. The data were actually collected from seven geographic regions, namely Western Europe and North America, Eastern Europe and the Middle East, Africa, South Asia, China, Southeast Asia, and South America. The differences between these regions were significant. In North America and Western Europe, the risk of stroke was not associated with drinking carbonated beverages or water, while consuming fruit juices was protective. In Africa, juices and carbonated drinks increased risk by 45%, and even water increased risk. In China, juices and fizzy drinks increased risk while water reduced it. The largest increase in risk for carbonated drink consumption was 80% in South America. As far as coffee goes, Less than four cups a day in North America and Western Europe was actually protective. So was tea in China and South America, but not in South Asia, where consumption was associated with higher odds of stroke. What are we to make of all this? How can soft drink consumption increase stroke risk in Africa and not in North America? Why does drinking lots of water reduce the risk of stroke in China or the Middle East and not in Western Europe or North America? The only logical answer is that other factors are involved. While attempts were made to control for smoking, alcohol, hypertension, and activity level, it is almost impossible to control for the varied diets around the world, social interactions with friends and family, exposure to environmental chemicals, stress levels, and climate. By cherry-picking details in this study, it would be possible to come away with the message that as long as you live in North America, soft drink or water consumption has no effect on the risk of stroke, but you better not be drinking fizzies in Africa or South America. Promoters of soft drinks may jump on such details and claim that they gave a pass to drinking soft drinks in North America. That would mean conveniently forgetting the numerous other studies that have crucified soft drinks, hypertension, weight gain, dental problems, diabetes, and all-cause mortality have all been linked with these beverages. Really, there's nothing in this study that would change my mind about beverages. Replace soft drinks, including artificially sweetened ones, with unsweetened tea or water, and don't go overboard with coffee. Sometimes details can devilishly obscure a picture instead of clarifying it. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.